We know there had been a, f a couple of concerns posted by uh, some of the players about some of the things when they first got to the bubble at the campus there, but how would you describe life inside the WNBA bubble right now? Well, I am sitting squarely inside of the WNBA bubble, or as we are all affectionately calling it, the wobble, and things have gotten better. <laughs> so, you know, they had a couple of hiccups the first 48 hours. They have fixed those, but I'm going to tell you my hotel is amazing, clean, lovely. The food's been awesome, and all the players I've talked to are happy. They, they got any little hiccups. that There was only a handful, but they got those resolved. As far as players and a hiccup on arriving, not arriving, trying to medically opt, opt out, Elena Deladon, that whole story and the road it has taken, what, what is going on with her, if anything? Yeah, I don't think that we'll see Elena play this year. She has Lyme disease and some some continuing conditions from Lyme disease. And just we don't know much about the coronavirus and how it will interact with her immune system. So she's understandably very nervous. But... There are a lot of stars here that are returning to the court. Diana Taurasi is back playing this year, and she's going to take to the court Saturday. You'll see that game on ABC. Sue Bird is back, MVP from 2018, Brianna Stewart. So there are some players who aren't playing, but it is the most star power we've ever had in the league who is back, who did opt in, Candace Parker, Neko Ogumake, um, a lot of MVP power in the league this year. So it is exciting. Holly Rowe with us reporting live from the Wubble, our ESPN, <laughs> NBA, and WNBA all-around reporter in this. And Holly, I'm curious, you mentioned some of those names involved in this, and I saw this tweet yesterday from Rebecca Lobo. Sabrina Ionescu was four years old when Sue oh. Bird played her first WNBA game. They're <laughs> going to square off at noon Eastern on Saturday. Have you heard much about Sabrina and just kind of what this moment is meaning to her, going up against the legend and being around someone like Sue Bird in your first look at WNBA action? action. Yeah, there's kind of a cool backstory there. Sabrina played against Sue Bird this year when Sabrina was with Oregon and Oregon beat the U.S. national team. So Sue, Sue and Sabrina have already faced off. But to be fair, Sue Bird was just coming back from a, a knee microfracture surgery. It was her first game back from injury. So um, there's been a little there's been a little beef. We call it the T here in the WNBA. But uh, Sabrina Unescu's <laughs> twin brother, Eddie, tweeted the box score from that and like highlighted what Sabrina did against Sue Bird oh, in that first matchup. Hey. Sue Bird had some good sense of humor and uh, responded. Somebody on Twitter sent out this meme that was like a player driving to the basket every single time. And Sue had a good sense of humor. And she said, how do you all like my new haircut? So they're having some fun back and forth. Um, but Sabrina, we, we actually just covered, I just did her last college game for Oregon right before the pandemic hit. So that's the last basketball game I've covered. And the next basketball game I'll cover is her pro debut. Um, she's really excited. I ran into her in the hotel lobby yesterday and she said, everything's been going really well here. She's very happy with her training camp so far. But one interesting thing she said, she knows the entire New York Liberty playbook. She said before she got here, she wanted to make sure that she knew all the plays, um, you know, because they haven't really been able to get on a court together except for the last 14 days. So Sabrina knows all the plays already. She's got seven rookies on this team. Um, I think that's kind of cool that she came in here knowing the whole playbook already. Yeah, came in prepared. There's no question about it, as uh, Holly Rowe was with us. So, Holly Rowe, we, we, we've seen what the, the NBA plans to do uh, to keep going with uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. And uh, LeBron says it's not a movement for him. It's, it's just his life. We saw what Major League Baseball did to start the season uh, with the, between the Nationals and the Dodgers, socially distanced, holding that black ribbon and so many of the players kneeling and Andrew McCutcheon uh, writing that poem that he got Morgan Freeman uh, to voice. What are the WNBA plans and how are they going to continue Continue to keep the focus on what they want to keep it on in, in, in that front. Yeah, it's really special. The WNBA, in association with the Players Association and the, the league itself, they have put Black Lives Matter on the court here. Um, it was actually Brianna Stewart's idea in the beginning, the MVP from 2018, and the NBA liked that idea and they took it for their own in Orlando. The other thing that's going to be very special um, is opening day and, and Sunday, on Saturday and Sunday, all of the players will have the name Brianna Taylor. So their jerseys will say Angel McCautry, and then right below that will say the name of Brianna Taylor, who was a young woman, 26 years old. You may have heard about her, um, shot and killed in her bed in Louisville by police 
on a no-knock warrant. And you've seen a lot of the NBA players in their media availability. When people ask them questions, they have directed that to mm -hmm. Breonna Taylor's situation and that she has still not had any justice. So I really think it's neat. All of the women of the WNBA will have her name on their jersey. They want us to continue to say her name and know that there are forgotten women who are often the victims of police brutality. So they want to keep that at the forefront. Um, that was Angel McCautry's idea. She played there at Louisville, and uh, Louisville is where this terrible incident happened with Breonna Taylor. And it's cool. They've been working with her mom, um, Tamika Palmer, and they actually did a panel and a big Zoom call with all the players and the Social Justice Council with Breonna Taylor's mother uh, night before last. So it's just very special what they are continuing to do here for the WNBA and the Black Lives Matter lifestyle. I like what LeBron said, that it's not just a movement, it is life, everyday life, and we are here to support that. And we know that, that some women decided not to play this year to keep that going, but it is impressive. Well, Holly, you're talking about the women inside the wobble, as you are calling it, uh, <laughs> still still making this a very, very important and wanting to keep it on the forefront, no doubt about it. But also they are there to play basketball. So let's look at this season, this 22-game season they're going to have, again, with some big-time players not going to be there. Who is the favorite? How do you see the season playing out? Well, um, I love that, you know, you guys were talking about the Seattle Kraken. So release the WNBA Kraken right now because I think Seattle is the team to beat here. You know, they get Brianna Stewart back who sat out last year with an Achilles injury. And um, she has been able to get some time back on the court playing with the U.S. national team. She had five games in Russia there with her pro team before the pandemic hit. And so Brianna Stewart has looked unbelievable. Every practice video I've seen of her Looks like she is on an MVP mission. She gets Sue Bird back. But this is a young team that had to learn how to play without those two stars last year. And so other players like Natasha Howard, Jewel Lloyd, Jordan Canada, they probably have more talent coming off the bench than some teams have on their roster. So I think Seattle is the team to beat. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.